Good morning and welcome to the second part of this seminar, which is held in connection with International Museum Day. So before I unveil the story of uh, Francis Turbine, I would just uh, like to tell you why the museums are obsessed with uh, these objects. We as uh, human beings are always uh, intimately connected to objects and these objects bring memories like the motorcycle used by my father, the telephone which we had in my home in the beginning, the home where I stayed in the childhood. Such memories are always there. And the museums are the result of such memories. May not be such uh, individual memories, a collective memory. The objects which we use in the museums, either will be uh, naturally natural things or man-made, like the Natural History Museum or Geological Museums, they use natural objects and the museums like uh, art museums, history museums, science and technology museums, they use man-made objects. And each of these objects have a particular, uh, they, stay in a, they are situated in a particular time and space. So it is a narration, the story which the museum tell, which makes the object interesting. And the object, uh, the object which we use in the museums, we call it the artifact. Artifact is not just an old dusty object, but it has a lot of stories to tell us. In a, in a science museum like the Visheshraya Industrial Technological Museum, we use the objects to tell the history of science and technology. How these objects have changed the course of uh, the science and technology. So now let us look into the, uh, the, the object, the Francis turbine, which is displayed in front of the uh, museum. These are the vital statistics of the, uh, the turbine, which is displayed. It's uh, almost uh, three meter in diameter, a huge turbine. It's a, uh, the, the, our label says it's a Francis turbine. We shall go into details of that later. It's an invert radial flow reaction turbine. It was manufactured by Boeing and Co Limited, London in 1920. It's almost 100 years old. It was in use at the Shashadriya hydroelectric power station at Shivanasamra in Karnataka. It used to work at a net head of 415 feet. The turbine was donated to the museum by Mysore State Electricity Board. This is in brief about the, uh, the turbine. Let's see uh, something about these turbines. The turbines are some, uh, the, uh, some you can say as engines, which convert the energy of either it's a uh, flowing water or steam or gas to produce rotary motion. So turbines are the heart of any power plant. So the, uh, the turbine here, the Francis turbine is a hydraulic turbine or you can call it a water turbine which use water as the working fluid. So when water at high pressure flows through the turbine, the turbine starts rotating and this rotation of the turbine is, is uh, the, the rotation of the turbine is connected to a uh, dynamo which converts the rotation into electricity. You can see the uh, animation here where the water is stored at a height like a, a reservoir, a dam, from where it comes down through pipes which are called penstocks and it turns a turbine here and the water flows downstream. And this, and the turbine is connected to a generator, which generates electricity, is, which is connected. The turbines, depending on its uh, the uh, the height height of the water level, the different types. They are, they are classified into different uh, turbines. They are called low head turbines, medium head turbines, and higher head turbines. And according to the axis of the turbine, also we have got different uh, turbines. The water, whatever is shown here is a vertical shaft turbine. The turbine which we are having here is a horizontal turbine. And another main classification of uh, water turbines are impulse and reaction turbines. You can see something in detail about this. Now, 
figure sh uh, shows two different types of uh, turbines, the impulse turbine and the reaction turbine. In the impulse turbine is just a stream of water which is impinging on a set of uh, buckets, making the wheel to rotate. And uh, in the reaction turbine, it's a change in direction of the flow of water which makes the turbine rotate, something like the lawn sprinkler, which rotates because of the jet which comes out of that. The Francis turbine, which we are having here, is actually belonging to this type of turbine called the reaction turbine. And as you can see, uh, the reaction turbine in the reaction turbine, the the, the shape of the uh, the turbine is something special, which is called a spiral casing, or it's called a volute casing. And the water flows full inside the volute casing, turning the runner at the center. So now let us see something in detail about this Francis turbine. Different types of uh, turbines were used, turbines or water wheels were used since time immemorial to make use of uh, the energy of flowing water. But it was after the uh, discovery of electricity dynamo by Faraday, which converted uh, rotation to electricity and also after the discovery of uh, light bulb by Edison that power generation became a norm and the first power plant came into existence in 1882. The first Heidel power plant also came into existence in 1882 in US where uh, the flow of water was used to produce electricity. The Francis turbines uh, came into existence sometime in 1848, and uh, these turbines are considered to be one of the highly efficient turbines. The main part of uh, the turbine, as you can see here, is this involute casing. The water enters over here, the inlet is here, and it moves around this casing and enters to the center also. The center portion is called the runner, which rotates when the water enters and the water drains out perpendicular to the stream. And here, it's, this is the backside of the, uh, of the turbine, where you can see the shaft, which, is, which can be connected to the generator. And there are some linkages here, which you can see in red color, which are used to uh, change the uh, gate veins, which you are seeing here. These veins are supposed to, um, regulate the flow of water into the runner, thereby the speed of the uh, runner can be controlled. i just show you one uh, uh, walk around this, uh, the, around the uh, Francis turbine at the museum. This is a front view of that. Maybe I can show you some of the uh, some uh, the parts of the turbine in detail here. This is the inlet to the turbine, uh, which is almost two feet in diameter. The water enters here, and the water which is entering here, then it flows to this volute casing and enter the uh, the uh, runner, which is at the center. This is the runner through this uh, gate veins. The gate veins, the details of the gate veins are shown here. The position of that can be changed with the help of this mechanism at the back. And here the, uh, you can see the enlarged view of the blades of the runner. As the water comes out through these veins, the force which it exerts on the veins makes the runner to rotate. So this is in short about the, uh, the how a turbine works, the Francis turbine works. Now let's see something about uh, the, uh, the the turbine where it was installed, and uh, the company which made this turbine. 
the, com uh, the company which made this turbine is Boeing and Co. Limited London, uh, who were a major manufacturer of turbines during that time. And it, uh, the, the turbine was installed in the one of the first hydro power plants in Asia, which is located in Shivanasamdram in Karnataka. It is interesting to see how this uh, power plant came up in Shivanasamdram. Maybe around just 20 years after the first hydro power plant was installed in US. The river Kaveri divides into two two streams at Shivan and Samudra and there is a natural fall of around 100 meters there causing two uh, waterfalls, Barak Chuki and Gagan Chuki. The, the river again joins after the fall and thus forming an island of Shivan and Samudra. The energy of this uh, waterfall is used in this first uh, hydro power plant at Shivana Samdra. Somebody who, uh, who was interested in power generation thought that uh, the, the power from the waterfalls could be used for producing electricity and this was put to the Mysore king Nalwadi Krishna Raja Vadayar and the Divan of Mysore K. Sheshadri Ayar. They got interested in this uh, idea and it was also thought that uh, the, power from the, uh, uh, the power plant could be used to light up the mines at Kolar gold fields, which was, which was active during those times. The Mysore kings took a lot of interest in this uh, project and they sent a team of engineers to Niagara waterfalls were a power plant, hydro power plant was installed in 1895. The team of engineers went to uh, US, they stayed there for six months, came back and made a blueprint of the project. It was in uh, maybe 1899 or 1900. And the, uh, the blueprint was uh, approved by the Mysore kings and later by the government of India and thus the work began. And the materials were to be outsourced to be brought from US and uh, UK. The machinery was to be brought from US and UK. One can visualize how uh, difficult it was to bring the materials from US to Shivanasamdra uh, those days, hundred years, more than 100 years back. Shivanasamdra is around 120 kilometers from Bangalore. So maybe the uh, machinery was brought to the Madras port from there by train. It was brought to Bangalore and maybe one can visualize uh, it was brought to Shivana Savadara by bullock cards or horse cards or elephants, you don't know how. But it was a very tough task. Thanks to the hard work put by the people, the engineers, the, the uh, power plant was operational in 1902 with a, a capacity of 700 kilowatts. And, it, and the transmission line of 147 kilometers was also laid towards to polar gold fields. It will be interesting to think how the just 100 meter fall of the water in Shivana Samudra could light up the polar, polar gold fields, which is 3,000 meters down. You can see the pictures of uh, the Mysore king Nalwadi Krishnaraja Vadayar and uh, Diwan of Mysore K. Sheshadri Ayer here. The power plant is named after Sheshadri Ayer. And you can also see the waterfall in full bloom at Shivana Samudra. And this, uh, the power from the power plant also uh, lighted up the streets of Bangalore, maybe three years later, 1905. It will be also interesting to see the, the, the uh, turbine which is installed at the museum, on display at the museum, it was not there when the power plant was inaugurated in 1902, but it was installed in 1920 and it was uh, generating power for almost 40 years and it was decommissioned and thanks to the Mysore State Electricity Board, 
it was donated to the museum for its display. So it'd be interesting to just think how in, uh, the, the turbine which was made 100 years back in some place in UK brought to Shivana Samudra, installed there, and which uh, generated power for 40 odd years to regions in, uh, in and around Bangalore and Mysore, is now sitting at the museum telling the story to all our visitors. Thank you.